let's first review our understanding of cycle time and lead time. To reduce cost and time, it is important to know the critical difference between the two time concepts. If the world were a baby factory, its current capacity is 300 babies per minute, with a cycle time of 0.2 second per baby. But the lead time or processing time of every newborn baby is always 9 months. As world population increases, capacity will increase, but lead time will remain the same. Next, let's see what happens when you reduce cycle time and lead time. Let's first try reducing cycle time and see what happens to our capacity and lead time. Our process capacity in our previous example is 12 units per hour. Suppose by improving the efficiency of our bottleneck operator C, we can cut the cycle time from 5 to 3 minutes. Since the bottleneck now shifts to station E, our capacity increases to 15. Consequently, we've also cut the lead time from 15 to 13 minutes. The principle is that reducing the bottleneck cycle time always increases the capacity of the entire process and reduces lead time. While reducing cycle time increases capacity, cutting lead time will not always increase capacity. Let's see how this is so. Suppose through re-engineering, we realize that station E is unnecessary and we can completely take it out of the process. Lead time is cut to 11 minutes. But note that the bottleneck is still station C, which means that our process capacity stays at 12 units per hour. The principle is that if lead time is reduced by cutting or eliminating non-bottleneck operations, process capacity will not increase. One practical insight we get from this lesson is, in general, to increase capacity, production volume or sales, just reduce the cycle time of the process by reducing the bottleneck, while to reduce order processing time or to cut inventories and work in process, cut lead time. You also cut lead time to reduce queuing time of customers inside service factories, thereby improving customer satisfaction. 